Hey friends, how y'all doing today? Tyra here with Inspired Life, where hearts are inspired to live fully mind, body, spirit. And since God blessed me with six kids, listen, we talking about parenting too. So I thank you for joining me today. For those of you catching the replay, welcome. For those of you who it's your first time on the broadcast, welcome. We are in the middle of a 21-day series, a 21-day series on purposeful prayer for children. So today, we are smack dab in the middle of it. We are on day 11, yes, for 10 days so far. We have been praying purposely for children. It is my assertion that every adult, every adult, whether you have born children of your own body or not, every adult has a responsibility to proactively pour into the lives of children in their circle of influence. Listen, I just left one of my friend's house. I had the honor of holding her newborn baby in my arms. Is this my baby? No. Do I have a responsibility to care for this baby, to pray for this baby, to serve this baby's mother any way I can? Yes, I do. Why? Because God has placed us in a village. God has placed us in community. How did we see the first church, the church in Acts, thrive? Because they sold what they had and they served one another. And that includes children. In the Bible, we see that children are a part of the assembly. Even Jesus himself had to chastise the disciples who were trying to keep the children at bay. Jesus had to say, nah, bro, we don't do that. We welcome the children. No, you step back and you tell them kids to come on. Come on here. So each of us in our own lives should be like Jesus, looking for an opportunity to say, hey, let the little children come to me. Even if they're not your own children, somebody else's children pour into the lives of. Last week, another girlfriend texted me and she said, Tyra, listen, if anything happens to me, God has told me that you're the one who is going to cover my daughter in prayer if I'm unable. I was like, whoa, sign me up. You know, I, I gladly take on that responsibility. But the mother probably said this to me, one, for two reasons. One, because the Holy Spirit told her to. And two, because every time we're together, God has told me, so a word of truth, an encouraging word, a positive word into that one particular child's life. Now, that friend of mine has a lot of children. But God has given me the assignment to speak well, to speak words of edification to that one particular child. So you spend some time in prayer, look at your circle of influence, and even outside of your own children, see what child God has called you to pray for. If you do not have any children, if you are an educator, if you are a godparent, heck, if you are a business owner, Look for opportunities to invite children into your world. Look for opportunities to go into a child's world and positively pour into the life of that child. So that was just my, I don't know, pre-appetizer um, right there on our call and, and on my passion to see us pour into the lives of children, y'all. We have a duty. And I thank all of you on the broadcast for joining me and being committed to do just that. I thank you. I thank you for partnering with me. I thank you for touching and agreeing with me. I thank you for sharing this broadcast because by doing that, we are partnering to build up the lives of children. Guess what? The children that we're serving today, one day we're going to trade places with them. One day, I remember when I was a child and the children used to come up to my father while well, I was a teen and they would come up to my father for candy. And then like I was the person then that they started running up to for candy. You know, my dad and I had switched that position. And now those kids who were running up to me for candy are adults. And then some other kid is running up to them for candy. So we're each 
pouring in. One day, the generation that we're pouring into now might even be changing um, our soil diaper or our bedpan, you know, when we're coming to our last days, okay? So we want to do our due diligence to ensure we are building them up so that they are helping move this world into a better place. We see all this darkness, despair, calamity, and we can directly do something about it by pouring into the children in our circle of influence. So I thank you for joining me and for partnering with me on this miss mission to parent purposefully and to pray purposely for children. So did y'all see the title today? The title. Today we are on day 11 and it says, act like you got some sense. Let us take a look at our foundational scripture for today because we want our children to act like they got some sense, but today is kind of a play on words. We want our children to act like they have sense and that they will accept themselves, love themselves, and honor themselves. And our foundational scripture talks about having some sense. Let's look at Proverbs 19:8. Somebody drop that in the comments for me, please. Proverbs 19, verse 8, which says this. Whoever gets sense loves his own soul. He who keeps understanding will discover good. Let me read that again. And somebody drop that in the comments. Proverbs 19, 8. Whoever gets sense loves his own soul. Your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. So here we see God said, you, you're going to get some sense. And with that sense, you will love yourself. Your, you will love your mind, your will, and your emotions. So today, we're praying for our children's relationship. Um, Siobhan, is it 19.10 or is it 19.8? Oh, 19.8. Okay, good. Today, we're praying for our children's relationship with themselves. So all week, we've been praying on relationships. We've prayed for our children's relationship with parents, their relationship with friends, their relationship with God. Today, we are praying for their relationship with themselves. How important is it? I want you to think about yourself, for example. How important is it for you to love yourself? Have there been times where you have not thought well of yourself, where you have spoken ill of yourself? And it can happen unconsciously without us thinking about it. Like even now, if I look at my face, I can say some negative things and not think well of myself. I can say, girl, you really could have spent a little bit more time doing your hair. Your hair look a mess. You didn't put on no mascara today and no eyeliner. You didn't make your eyes pop. Your face look a mess. I purposely didn't today because I've been the weeping prophet all week. I just been crying. So I didn't even go there with the mascara today, but it's all good. So perhaps you all have done it. You looked in the mirror and you saw the waistband of your pants a little tight and you said, oh my gosh, I'm just so fat. You know, whatever it is that you've done to speak ill of yourself. We have done it as adults and we do not want our children to suffer that same thing. We want our children to think well of themselves, to love themselves, to see themselves as God sees them. And in order to do that, they have to have that surety that they're rooted and grounded in what God says about them and who God says they are. So what did God say about them? God said that he knew them like from way before and that he formed their inward parts. God said they were fearfully and wonderfully made. The Bible also says in Ephesians 5, 29, for no one ever hated their own flesh, but nourishes it and cherishes it just as Christ does the church. Isn't what that what we want for our children? For them not to hate their flesh, for them not to look on themselves and despise themselves, but to nourish themselves, to cherish themselves just as Christ does the church. Don't we want that for them? We don't want them to walk around with the same level of brokenness 
that we have had that now we're healing from in our adulthood. Come on, y'all. We want our children to know they are loved by God, that they are accepted by God, that they have the freedom to be their authentic selves with all of their peculiarities, with all of their proclivities, with their temperament, with their attitudes. We want them to know that God gives them permission to be their authentic selves. We want our children to know that they can treat themselves with love and compassion. Do you have a child who's a perfectionist? The perfectionist child, while it's good to strive for excellence and want to do your best, the perfectionist child can beat themselves up when they do a good job. They can become sullen and withdrawn when they feel like they have not done the right thing. Do you want your child to fall in that pit of perfection where if they feel like they've made a mistake, the world is coming to an end? No, we want them to grant themselves grace and to love themselves, to say that, you know, I tried my best, God saw my heart, and saw my attention, and in that, he is well pleased. We want our children to speak well of themselves. We know that the words we speak create the world we live in. Our words create worlds, and so we want the words of their mouth and the meditation of their heart to be pleasing in God's sight. So if the words of their mouth are things that talk bad or talk ill of themselves, that would not be speaking well of God because we know that the word says that they were made in his image. So if they were made in his image and then they don't like their image, then you're not only talking bad about you, you're talking bad about God. And as I tell my children, God don't make no junk. So we want our children to speak well of themselves. We want our children to be reminded that they are a friend of God. Perhaps your child thinks, you know, oh, if I do something bad, God's going to hate me. God's not going to love me. You know, God's not going to want to be my friend. Well, no, even to David who made mistakes, God was still a friend to him. So we have to be sure to encourage our children that even when you make a mistake, even when you sin, God still loves you. That nothing separates you from the love of the Father. We want our children to know that in Christ, they are a new creation. So when they accept Christ as Lord and Savior, behold, all things become new. The old things pass away. So if you have a child who, you know, was making mistakes before, feel like I can't get it right. You know, I done messed up my life. I can't do nothing right. Well, you know what? When you surrender and you turn it over to God, he makes all things new. He gives beauty for ashes. He gives joy for pain. And he gives a garment of praise for a spirit of heaviness. He takes their sin and he casts it into the lake of fire. So we have to assure our children of that because if we don't, they may walk around again, speaking ill of themselves, thinking ill thoughts toward themselves. And we want them to think well of themselves and speak well of themselves. God loves them so much. He's given them good gifts. And we know that every good and perfect gift comes from above. And we can assure them that, that they in our lives represent a good gift, that they were a good gift that God blessed us with, and they will be a good gift that will then go out and bless the world. We want our children to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that rejection is not their portion, that they are not rejected by God, even if they're rejected by friends, rejected by um, co-workers, rejected prayerfully, not by you. I pray that they know that they're not rejected by you. I pray that the words of your mouth, parent, edify them, encourage them, and build them up. Speaking of which, before we did this 21-day series, Purposeful Prayer for Children, we did 21 days purposeful prayer for parents, y'all. Ooh, that was a tight piece up in there, up in there, because God was really holding me accountable for everything I was talking about. So God was doing some refining in me and I was on a fast 
and yeah, he was making some things new. He was purging me and yeah, I was becoming new. So if you missed any of those, you can catch the 21 days of purposeful prayer for parents over on the Inspired Life Facebook page. I'm telling you, that 21 days will bless your life. It might wreck you a bit too. Um, it might sting a little bit. It might convict you a little bit, but it will bless you and you will leave encouraged, okay? So we want to ensure that our children are not feeling dejected and rejected, but they know that they have the surety that they are known by God and loved by God and that their identity is in him so that they don't go looking outward for this self-affirmation. They should be able to speak well of themselves and not be looking for that kind of affirmation from outside. Why? Because you've assured them what God says of them and you assure them what you think of them. You speak well over them. You speak life over them. You're speaking the Father's words over them. So they don't have to look outside. We see that in the world today. Plenty of people looking for affirmation from outside. I've been having a conversation with this, about this with my two oldest children. And we've been talking about people that you see in the music industry who end up like drug addicts and all this stuff looking for, for affirmation and approval from outside. And when those outside, those external things do not provide fulfillment, then they go on to take their lives. No, that is not the plight of our children because they are in, they are in healthy relationship with themselves. So let's take a look one last time at um, our scripture for today. Today's scripture, Proverbs 19 and 8. And today, day 10, act like you got some sense. Well, our children will act like they got some sense by being in a healthy relationship with themselves, by knowing themselves, by knowing who they are in Christ and that their identity is rooted and grounded in him. So they don't have to look externally for affirmation. They don't have to look externally for approval because in God's eye, they are a friend of God. They are loved by God. Nothing can separate them from the love of God that you love them, that they are received and accepted in their own home, that they can be the authentic people that God created. Oh, and they will have some sense, right? This is what the scripture says in Proverbs 19 and 8. Whoever gets sense, so they will have some sense. Whoever gets sense loves his own soul. So we want them to love themselves. And we love our own soul. And our soul is the mind, the will, and the emotions. We want our children to love their mind and to nurture their minds with good thoughts, with good thoughts of what God says about them. We want them to think well of themselves. We don't want them to think, oh, I always make mistakes. Oh, I'm, I'm never going to be nothing. Oh, I can never get it right. Oh, I'm too fat. Oh, I'm too thin. Oh, I'm too dark. Oh, my hair's not right. You know, all these things that we know as adults, we have uh, faced. So we want the soul, the mind, their will. We want their will to be right. And the will that, that should be right in them is the will of God over their lives. So we have to teach them to discern the will of God in their life. And then finally, their emotions. We want to pray that the fruit of the spirit is what they bear, that they have a spirit controlled emotions. So they have love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. This is what the word of God tells us. So it says, whoever gets sense loves his own soul. And it also says in Ephesians 5 and 29, for no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes it and cherishes it. So we ought to nourish and cherish ourselves. It says, just as Christ does the church. So friends, today we are praying that our kids act like they got some sense, 
by knowing who they are, by knowing whose they are, and then loving and governing themselves accordingly, okay? So let us look to the Lord in prayer here on day 11 of 21 days of purposeful prayer for children. Let's look to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we just thank you so, so much that we are known by you, that we are loved by you, that we were made in your express image, Father, that before you formed us, you knew us. And then you fashioned us just fearfully and wonderfully. And you've done the same thing for our children. What a good, good God you are. Father, give us our children the surety beyond a shadow of a doubt. Make it clear to them. Unveil the mystery for them that they are seen by you, that they are known by you, and that they are loved by you such that they accept themselves love themselves, and honor themselves for the persons you've created them to be. Assure them, God, that they are fearfully and wonderfully made. Assure them, God, that it blesses you when they honor themselves, when they love themselves, when they have sense and love their own soul. Assure them, Father, that their identity is found in you, God. Assure them, Heavenly Father, that they don't have to look to external things. Our girls do not have to look to boys in their words and their behavior for affirmation. Our sons do not have to look to girls, to pornography, to video games, to any other external thing for affirmation but they find their affirmation in you, God. And as a result, they can love themselves wholly and completely, that they will give themselves permission to be their authentic selves. God, some of the parents on the broadcast are struggling with this for themselves, Heavenly Father. God, please, please, by the power of the blood of Jesus, heal the parents so that they are not parenting through their own brokenness. Heal the parents, Father, so that they are not transferring to their children their own broken image, their own broken identities, God, so that our children are whole, Heavenly Father, whole in you because they're rooted in you, they're grounded in you, and they will be able to love themselves, to accept accept themselves for the persons you've created them to be. For you knew them before the foundation of the earth and you sent them here for a time such as this. In Jesus name we pray and give thanks. Amen. 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 Y'all, our time together in this 21 days of prayer while we'll only be here for 21 days, this is the surety that we have. Our prayers we're praying today will minister from the throne of grace for generations to come. Like God gave me that revelation a few years ago, and I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that it's true. I got a reminder of that. We're going into overtime, FYI. Right now we're in overtime. As I was reading my devotion this morning, I'm reading The Circle Maker. And um, as I was reading my devotion, I was just giving thanks to God. Because again, as I read these words here, it assured me that the work... Hey, Shay, yes, girlfriend, overtime. Here we go. In the overtime today, so part two of this message, is your prayers will minister from heaven for generations to come. So that's the overtime message. Our prayers will minister from heaven for generations to come. The prayers that you are praying, the prayers that we are praying on this broadcast in 2018, when we are dead and gone, when we are worm food, as my father says, when all that's left of us is a vapor, these prayers will minister a Facebook Live, a Facebook Live prayer will minister 
to your great, great grandchildren. Yes, Shay. Hallelujah. So let me read this to y'all. So I'm reading, um, draw the circle. This is not the circle maker. The circle maker is a skinny book. So draw the circle is the 40 day devotional that goes to the circle maker. So in draw the circle today, this is what it says. So the, the, the concept of the circle is based on this um, sage named Honey. And Honey was like, Lord, I'm going to draw this circle and I'm going to stand in it till you bless us with some rain. And so God did just that for Honey. So this is what it says here. Toward the end of his life, Honey the circle maker was walking down a dirt road when he saw a man planting a carob tree. Honey questioned the man, how long will it take for this tree to bear fruit? The man replied, 70 years. Honey said, are you quite sure that you'll live another 70 years to eat its fruit? The man replied, perhaps not. However, when I was born into this world, I found many carob trees planted by my father and grandfather. Just as they planted trees for me, I am planting trees for my children and grandchildren so they will be able to eat the fruit of these trees. Glory! This incident led to an insight that changed the way Honey prayed. In the moment of revelation, the circle maker realized that praying is planting. Somebody drop that in the comments. Praying is planting. Each prayer is like a seed that gets planted in the ground. It disappears for a season, but it eventually bears fruit that blesses future generations. In fact, our prayers bear fruit forever. Woo! That is good news, my friends. That is good news. The prayers we pray today are going to minister from the throne of grace forever. So I thank you. I thank you that you are touching and agreeing with me in this place of prayer. I thank you that as you see your sisters and brothers in the body of Christ, drop in comments that you're catching the name and you're continuing to pray for them, to pray for their offspring, to pray for their seed. Because those prayers will minister from the throne of grace for eternity. <sighs> y'all, it just blessed my life to be here with y'all every day. Um, this was an act of obedience. Live, I can talk to people all day, human, live and in person. This video is so unnerving. But I'm getting over myself in order for us to meet in this place of prayer so that we can move in the promise that God says where to touch anything as touching it on earth, it shall be done by our Father who is in heaven. So I thank you all for joining me in this space where we can touch and agree. Ima imagine if one of our children's children's children intersected somewhere on this planet and we're just moving forward in the things of God and God would cause their experiences to come together and converge based on the prayers that we're praying today. You all, this is a kingdom movement. This is kingdom momentum, kingdom, moving the kingdom agenda forward. Oh, this is so good. This is so good, guys. So whatever it is that God is calling you to do, just please obediently walk in that thing because it is so bigger than us. Let us make sure we acting like we got some sense that we are loving ourselves, that we're nurturing our souls, our minds, our wills, and our emotions so that we can do our part to build his kingdom come, his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So friends, it's been my uh, prayer, my blessing, my honor to join you today. We're going to be back here tomorrow. God had already given the message for tomorrow and tomorrow's about detours. Okay. So tomorrow's broadcast is for that parent who feels like, what is my child doing? Where are you going? And what are you doing? It may have taken a slight detour. 
tomorrow we're going to be talking about detours. So make sure you all join me tomorrow, day 12. And then next week's lineup, I got guests coming on and everything. Next week's lineup, we're going to be praying for our children's bodies. We're going to be praying for their bodies. We're going to be praying for their minds. We're going to be praying for purity. And we're going to be casting out perversion. Next week is going to be mm, mm, good. So it just keeps getting gooder and gooder. Yes. So I'm, I'm just so grateful y'all can join me and hang out with me for your lunch break as we feast on the word for our lunch. So blessings to you guys. As always, it has been my prayer that you've been inspired to live fully. Blessings to you, Shay. And thanks back to you for joining, for joining in this mission for us to purposefully parent. Okay, so we'll look forward to seeing you guys tomorrow. God bless and take care.